Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. All right, the first two mentions of rust takes us to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So simply put, the Lord Jesus is saying that if you lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth, rust is going to corrupt it. And if you lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, you don't got to worry about rust corrupting it. So Jesus says, rust doth corrupt. Ephesians 4 22 through 24 says that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So the old man who is still under the curse of the law still going about to establish his own righteousness still having confidence in his flesh, that old man is corrupt. 1 Corinthians 15.53 says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So just like that brand new shiny car, it's all beautiful outwardly, but leave it out in the elements, and over time it's going to begin to get rusty. It's going to start to rust. Well, so does this flesh. It comes into this world and it's new as a newborn babe. And it too goes through the elements of life, through childhood, through adulthood. And before you know it, you're an old man, an old woman, and you're getting ready to die. You're starting to get rusty. All right, so rust is mentioned three times in the Word of God. Now, if you go to 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3, You'll read, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So we aren't to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We are to understand that Satan wants to corrupt our minds. 1 Timothy 6, 5 says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. And destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now if you go to Philippians chapter 3, you'll read about how the Apostle Paul was talking about those who are having confidence in the flesh and they are trusting in the flesh. And he gives this resume of himself when he was Saul, when he was a Pharisee, And he's basically saying, if anybody's going to trust in the flesh, guys, it's me. Because Paul says, as touching the righteousness which is in the law, he was blameless. But if you go to verse 7, Paul says, But what things were gain to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And in verse 9, he says, Be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So you see, Paul, when he was Saul, he was trusting in the flesh. He was laying up for himself treasure here upon this earth. He was supposing that gain was godliness. But Saul took up the cross and became a new creature in Christ, Paul. And he said, those things that were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And so you see now Paul has been renewed in the spirit of his mind. He now has the mind of Christ. To be spiritually minded is life and peace, for to be carnally minded is death. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So that carnal mind has to be put to death. 
And we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Because Satan wants us to have corrupt minds. That's why he wants you reading from these corrupt Bibles with corrupt words. Drinking water from corrupt springs so that your mind will be corrupt. This is a battle for your mind. And this is why we're to have on the helmet of salvation. Because there is a war, a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And the Lord tells us to think on these things. To give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Okay, because just like that car that's all shiny and brand new, if you leave it out and you don't put it to use and you're not using it, it's going to get rust. It's going to get rusty. You have to take care of it. Here in Job 17.1, we get that pattern of three. My breath is corrupt. My days are extinct. The graves are ready for me. Psalms 38 verse 5. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Remember Paul saying Galatians 3, O foolish Galatians. And what were they doing? They were trusting in the flesh. They were thinking that they were made perfect by the flesh, by the works of the law, rather than the hearing of faith. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So it's foolishness that is causing his wounds to stink and be corrupt. Now foolishness is the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world is foolishness. So it is the wisdom of this world that is causing these wounds to become corrupt. James 3.14 says, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Again, that pattern of three. Earthly, one, sensual, two, devilish, three. All right, and we find the third mention of rust in James chapter 5, verse 3. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days." So this treasure that they've heaped together for the last days, they were laying up for themselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. So this rust is connected with the flesh. He says that this rust shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Revelation 17, 16 says, And the ten horns, so think the ten commandments, the law, the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, Remember, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 18 says that they themselves are beasts, the sons of men, right? So these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked. So think of someone who has not yet put on the new man, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. They're still naked because they're trusting in themselves, in their own righteousness, in the flesh. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. It's exactly what he says in James 5, 3. And Revelation 19.2 says, For true and righteous are his judgments. For he had judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. You better store your treasure in heaven. Your golden 
shall be a witness against you. Don't you see this flesh is made from dust and one of these days it's gonna Does corrupt.